The Utah Jazz have fallen apart, just like we were expecting this year. They are on a five-game losing streak, and they have went from first in the Western Conference all the way down to ninth, and had the Timberwolves and Mavericks not had bad weeks as well, probably could see them as low as 11 even, which is kind of showing how crazy the Western Conference is right now. Do you want to point out the Nuggets at the second seed are only three and a half games ahead of the 11 seed Dallas Mavericks right now uh, and the 10 seed Minnesota Timberwolves. So there's a lot of room for these teams to still shuffle around. The Jazz aren't dead in the water. They're still above 500. But if the last week and a half is any indication, I don't think that they're going to be a contending team this year, as we all expected. So let's look at some trades for the Utah Jazz. If you do enjoy what you see in this video, make sure to leave a like and also subscribe. Also, sorry about the camera quality. My normal setup is having a little bit of technical difficulties um, with a new update that they rolled out for my camera. So we're using my, my uh, actual Mac camera here. Not as good as I'd like, but we're going to get through it in this video. So hopefully you guys do enjoy. And now let's get into the first trade here for the Utah Jazz. It's one with the Washington wizards and it's an interesting offer here i actually have two offers here with the wizards uh one that we'll start the video with and one that we're also going to end the video with the first one here is for the shooting guard position specifically and for washington i think they're kind of playing a little bit better than a lot of people expected i highlighted them as a team that hey i'm not sure exactly how i feel about them but if they were to make a run, it wouldn't completely surprise me. They have some good talents. Kristaps Porzingis, who's been playing really, really great basketball. I wonder why the Mavericks uh, traded him. Seems like they could use a 7'3 guy who can protect the rim like he does and also shoot the three ball. But he's playing well in Washington. And I think this would be a good opportunity for Washington to kind of tighten up its rotation a little bit. Will Barton hasn't really performed up to standard there in Washington I think he's been actually one of their biggest net negative players in their rotation this year so they get off of him he's also quite a bit older than Malik Beasley at the price of two second round picks to Utah and the Jazz give up Malik Beasley what does this do for Utah well you added a couple extra seconds which gives you a little bit of pick flexibility especially when you're trying to make trades during the draft being able to throw in extra seconds gives you other future deal potential which I think is really important for where Utah is at currently and it also frees up cap space this summer in case you want it. You move off of a guy who's on a two-year deal for someone who's on an expiring in Will Barton. Now Malik Beasley's $15 million next year is not terrible, right? It's not something that is going to really handicap Utah. But if you want to open up that money, you know, Utah could realistically go into this summer with maybe a top three pick if things go right for them down the stretch as a tanking team and potentially max cap space. So that's a pretty good recipe for success if you're able to add a, a max player maybe a Victor Wembanyama or Scoot Henderson uh, and if what that means is giving up Malik Beasley you would live with that right that's the type of moves you would make for sure uh, and for Washington here I think Malik Beasley just gives you that shooting that you need a little bit more reliable than Will Barton I think it would be a really nice bench option this is actually the best I've seen Malik Beasley play this year he's been really locked in defensively more so to start the year a little bit lately he's been a little bit more complacent off the basketball but he's had some really good moments this year for Utah and I think if he goes to Washington he would probably make them a team that I would really believe could be a serious playoff team uh, not one that's going to win series probably but one that could at least make a little bit of noise in the first round win a game or two and you know make the uh, team that they're facing sweat a little bit going into our next trade here now it's one with the Minnesota Timberwolves a team that Talked about a little bit in the open. They're three and a half games back right now of the two seed, but can't say things have looked pretty. And I think part of that is this guy right here, D'Angelo Russell. He just has not played up to par. You think back to his sole all-star appearance with the Brooklyn Nets. He had Jared Allen as his dive man, and that created consistent offensive flow for him, gave him a nice outlet on pick and roll play. Uh, and someone who could go up, catch lobs, and also a guy who... Uh, just knew where to be at the right spots and protected him defensively as a rim protector. So I thought this year, hey, Rudy Gobert is going to do all of those things, but better. He's a better screen setter, better roll man, rolls deeper, rolls harder, and he's also a better rim protector. All of those things are true about Rudy Gobert, but all the other Minnesota Timberwolves just have not played up to par. D'Angelo Russell is down in pretty much every statistical category besides turnovers. Not a great sign. His efficiency from the field has been rather spotty. He has games where he goes 9 for 11 or... 10 for 12 and then he has games where he goes 3 of 14 and you just aren't going to get consistency from him at all which is what they need and this is why Minnesota would make this move you trade for Mike Conley who is one of the 
key factors of consistency. He's probably one of the more consistent guards over the last decade and a half in the NBA. And you save some money doing it. Now you do have to take in Rudy Gay. Rudy Gay is in here simply for money matching purposes. But we know Conley and Gobert work really well together. The two of them had really great pick and roll chemistry back in Utah. Part of that blender that Quinn Snyder used to run. And it cost Minnesota here a second round pick. For the Jazz, you might be wondering, well, why would they make this move? Mike Conley is nearly a decade older than D'Angelo Russell, and Rudy Gay is not part of their long-term plans. And again, if you're looking at free agency money this year, you would be able to get off of these two guys' contracts for an expiring here in D'Angelo Russell. If they paired this with the Malik Beasley trade, you would essentially have traded Conley, Beasley, Rudy Gay for three second rounders and max cap space plus $15 million of extra cap space. So that's a pretty good pairing for Utah already. But hey, D'Angelo Russell is 26 years old. Maybe, just maybe, Utah believes that they can rebuild his value a little bit, trade him again for a first-round pick. If we're going to look at Minnesota, the worst trade that they've made in the last five years, everyone's going to say it's the Rudy Gobert one, it's trading D'Angelo Rus trading for D'Angelo Russell while giving up Andrew Wiggins in a first-round pick. That's just not a good recipe for success. D'Angelo Russell has really let this team down in a lot of ways, unfortunately. Uh, and Minnesota right now is, I think, struggling because D'Lo's play is not up to pars with what I was expecting. And realistically, what most people should have expected, just based on what we saw in Brooklyn uh, and the theoretical pairing of him and Rudy Gobert. Going into our next offer now, we look at a deal here between Utah and the Dallas Mavericks. And this one's for Colin Sexton, who has been coming off the bench this year. He's been a reliable scorer for them, but he's one of those players that I think fans overvalue. Um, and a lot of executives value a little bit lower than where the fan perception is. Because of that, I have the Mavericks trading for him uh, because I think that they still need another creator. Yes, they signed Kemba Walker. I don't really believe that that means anything. Kemba Walker is one of the worst defensive players in the NBA. I would be surprised if he plays a playoff minute with the Dallas Mavericks. And if he does, it's going to be like in that Trey Burke role we saw three years ago uh, against the Clippers in the bubble. It's going to be a spot. Hey, he's going to go in for four minutes, try and score, and then he's going to come out of the game quickly before they can really take advantage of him on the other end. So Colin Sexton is a significant upgrade there. He is a better defender than Kemba Walker. It's not even close. Uh, and he's roughly about as equivalent as a score as you can get in the NBA. So he would be a big improvement here for Dallas. Now, I don't love his contract. I don't think that he's the long-term answer. I don't think he's going to fix all the wrongs right now in Dallas, but I think he would help. For Utah here, you take Davis Bertans, who his contract is what it is. It's bad. But you get a 2025 first-round lottery-protected pick. Now, the Mavericks, I don't actually think would be the team to do this because I think that they're, what they're trying to do is once that pick conveys to the Knicks this year, they could go into this next season with their 2024, 2026, 2028, and 2030 first round picks, all four of them, and use the four of them to target a superstar or a star in general. So Colin Sexton doesn't fit that for you. And if you made this trade, you'd be sacrificing the potential of doing a trade like that one I just mentioned. But if they're worried right now about making the playoffs, getting in uh, and making a run, Colin Sexton would help you with that. So for Utah here, I think you're maximizing Sexton's value. I think it's hard to get a first round pick for Sexton unless you're taking in a contract like Bertans where the Mavs would say, we're significant, significantly upgrading our player and we're you know kind of saving money here in the process to getting off of Bertans contract, which is why the first rounder is you know worthwhile giving up here. Again, I don't think Dallas is actually going to do this, but I think this is something that Utah would say, hey, this is kind of what makes sense for both sides. If we're gonna do this though, we need that 2025 first. Uh, and here I have it lottery protected. Could be, you know, maybe a couple seconds backup something like that, but that's kind of what we're looking at. And then our final trade here, back to Washington, like I talked about, and this one's on a different player. This one's focused on Jordan Clarkson making his way to the Wizards because I think that there's still a potential outcome here where the Wizards aren't super thrilled with Mo what Monte Morris has given them. And Rui Hachimura is due for an extension, probably won't get one. I, I would be surprised if Washington gave an extension. So this is a way for them to upgrade at the guard spot without really having to give up too much. And for Utah, you're saying, okay, we're giving up a 30 year old Jordan Clarkson for two guys who are 27 and 24 respectively with Morris and Hachimura. Does this mean that Utah is going to do this? No, but I think this is too much to give up for Washington to justify giving up any second round picks in this deal. 
And you might be surprised by this, but I was looking for Jordan Clarkson trades, and it's hard to see teams that are going to want to make a move for him. You think about Chicago, they have so many guards there already. Brooklyn, they don't need another guard that's styled like Jordan Clarkson. Think about Boston, they're fine with Malcolm Brogdon. You think about Brooklyn, it's like you get to the money matching purposes and they have to give up, you know, Pat Connaughton and, you know, someone else. And it's like, that doesn't really fit with what they're trying to do. They don't want to give up two rotation players for Jordan Clarkson, in my opinion. So it gets a little tricky trading Jordan Clarkson right now, just with how talented the NBA is, what teams need what. I also thought about Dallas for Clarkson. And really, really, they're probably the second most likely behind Washington, in my opinion. I wouldn't be surprised if no deal for Clarkson gets done just because I feel like the value is going to be a little tricky. If they ultimately do trade him, I think it's going to have to be for a lower value point than most fans are going to want. Something that looks like this, where maybe the Jazz say, hey, we'll give Hachimura a couple of years here and see if he's worth uh, worth making happen. And Monte Morris will probably roll with the punches with him and maybe see if we can flip him next year for a second round pick. So that's kind of what I'm thinking here for these two teams. Uh, and specifically for the Jazz, you know, it's been a, a tumultuous last two weeks for them. Uh, they've lost a ton of games. Uh, and I think that they're starting to kind of really be who they are a little bit more. I still think there are some bright spots here. I really like Jared Vanderbilt for them. I loved him in Minnesota last year. I think that there's some nice players here still in Utah. And I think there's a lot to build with Laurie Markin. And I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about how well he's playing. I didn't even consider trading him. I don't think Utah would look at trades for him unless they were getting significant first round compensation for him uh, just with how he's played this season. So, uh, you know, there's definitely positives here in Utah, but realistically, if they execute some of the trades I talked about in this video, they could go into the offseason with max cap space, a top three pick, uh, and probably really rebuild this thing right while still having Laurie Markin and Jared Vanderbilt, some of those key pieces there. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. Jazz fans, make sure to leave a like on this video. And if you're a fan of one of these other teams as well, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and we'll catch you in the very next Utility Sports video.